This is a demonstration called Keep Your Eyes on the Ions. Uh, this comes in a kit form. And in the kit, you get uh, four different color spheres. And you get some white paper. Now, um, I don't use the white paper. This, is, uh, this paper dissolves in water. It's made of a cellulose. It dissolves in water. But let me tell you how we're supposed to construct these. The point of the spheres is that two of the colors are magnetic or have magnets inside them and two of them don't. And it turns out that they, the red and the yellow spheres have magnets in them and the black and the blue do not. And so the whole idea is for the red and the yellow to be attracted to each other. So to prepare this, you need to provide your own glue and glue them together so that you have one with a magnet and one without. And that could be the red and the black or the red and the blue. Now, I've discovered something about these, and that's that you can open them up and take the magnets out. And the reason I like to do that is because I like to put the magnets in the blue ones so that when we're finished, I can have maize and blue sticking together. But it doesn't matter. You can keep them any way you want. What you need to do is take one with a magnet and one without and glue them together. The purpose of the paper was to glue the paper to the sides of the balls, to cut it in small pieces, and then to hold them together like that. If you're using white glue, you do not need to do that. You can take one with a magnet and one without. And the reason I have the scissors out here is because I've determined that these school scissors are the perfect size for holding the two spheres together until the glue dries. Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Holding them together with your hands until that little bead of glue dries is very difficult and you shake them around and it never works. So what I do is I set them up ahead of time in here with my drops of glue in between them, a little bit of glue there, a little bit of glue there, and I just leave them there to dry. They are portable. I can pick them up and move them until I'm ready to use them. It's tricks like that that make my life a whole lot easier. So, we'll go here to the ones I have already set up. And I have them set up the way they come in the kit, and that um, the yellow and the red have magnets in them, and the blue and the, yellow and the black do not. So I have them glued together, just a drop of glue. I don't use the paper. You're certainly welcome to use it. It comes in the directions on how to use the paper to glue the paper to the balls and hold that, them together that way. And what I have here now is two pieces of an ionic compound. Now you've got to be careful with students. Students think that there are molecules of sodium chloride and molecules of potassium sulfate. And that's not true. We know that we don't have individual pieces of sodium chloride. We have a whole lattice crystal. Sodium alternated with chloride and back and forth in three dimensions, plus, minus, plus, minus. We have, there are many uh, models you can make to show that lattice crystal. Uh, because of the way that magnets work, these don't, won't do that very well. I tried to get them to form a lattice crystal, but the magnets are round and the plus and the minus ends aren't on different ends, so it just didn't work. So you are taking, remind them that this is just a piece of an ionic compound. It's not a molecule of an ionic compound. So I have my red-black ionic compound and my maize and blue ionic compound. And what we have are two ionic compounds that are soluble in water. So I'm going to place them in water. We're going to see what happens to ionic compounds when they do dissolve in water. Teaching tip, just in case you use a little bit too much glue and it's hard to dissolve, you can break them as they go in. But the idea is that these compounds, when they dissolve in water, the positive ion and the negative ion are no longer attracted to each other. And I like to get them 
stirred pretty well because the magnetic ions are more dense than the water and they will fall to the bottom and the hollow ones are not. So if we stir them, one of the points this gets across is that when ionic compounds are going to water, they separate. We no longer have sodium chloride in water. We have sodium ions and we have chloride ions. And of course, we only have one of each here. We'd have moles and moles of each ion in a real solution. Okay, so now I have my two soluble compounds, which means I have, four diff I have two different ions in this beaker and two different ions in this beaker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two ionic solutions and I'm going to mix them together. And I want to know if I'm going to form a precipitate. So these are both ionic solutions with soluble ionic compounds. And as I mix them together, what I end up with is a precipitate of the yellow and the red on the bottom. And the black and the blue are still separate in the solutions. Okay, so I've got my spectator ions that really didn't do anything new. They were floating before, they're floating now. They were unattached before, they're unattached now. And I've got my precipitate. These two ions were in totally separate beakers to begin with, and now they form one compound. Okay, it's just a way to visualize precipitation reaction, the solution of ionic compounds. And it's another way to get our students thinking of ions and atoms as little balls floating around. Uh, the more they can see that in their head, the more they'll understand chemical reactions.